think I've been dabbling in music for a few years and um, uh, you know that uh, that's all I've ever wanted to do I didn't want to get me and Reese decided we didn't want to get real jobs so we thought like 30 years ago like let's try music and uh, and then one thing led to another and uh, one band led to another from you know from skinny puppy all the way to frontline assembly to delirium and here I am sitting in a tour bus 30 years later and I still manage to elude the working masses. Particularly now I have this whole new crew of, of people that like uh, have really like evolved and really pushed us to a new, you know, it's, it's almost like the second coming of our, our, our band, you know, like because we're getting now the same response we did when we, you know, when we started with the first two records and I think that has a lot to do with having a few people that are you know, in their late 20s, you know, that have come from an era of saying, you know, we grew up listening to your music and now they're helping create it. So I think that even makes it more special for me. Jared and Jeremy said in high school they were listening to uh, Fear Factory and Frontline stuff that, you know, me and Reese had been working on and, and um, they couldn't believe it when they first set on. You know, first we needed uh, a couple extra hands and next thing they couldn't believe that they were on stage with us. And, it's been eight years they've been with me now, you know, so it's like uh, it, then it's evolved and now they've turned into really, really competent electronic executioners of sorts and uh, it's like a really good team, you know, young and old together, you know, it, uh, it seems to uh, have voted quite well for us. I think what we tried to do, like I said, okay, you know, let, let's lose the guitars and that alone makes it a very electronic record and that's kind of what started Frontline and then, you know, there was a time when metal and industrial music, you know, the whole ministry era and Nine Inch Nails, everything really crossed, you know, and even the audiences, and that's why there was such big audiences back then, because metal heads would come to industrial band, uh, gigs and, and vice versa, you know, but that's completely stopped and it's very segregated again, you know. And um, so I thought, well, let's just get back to the roots. But having said that, you know, like, because these guys are younger guys and they're influenced a lot by new music now so that uh, the production values and levels and technology have changed so much that I think there's a lot of new elements to the way things are done you know like bass lines are not chained and ducked they're not like written in steps you know and just all you know I can go on forever but that that all those kind of things have really evolved and changed the band so it's like it's the root of the band, you know, what the inception of what Frontline Assembly was to me at the beginning. But Save It was re 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 rebooted to now. I was born and raised in Vienna and for the most part, I was in the convent for the most part of that, and, and uh, because you know, like my my uh, parents couldn't really look after me with their life and their job, so like that really shaped a lot of me because it was really you know full of nuns and priests and religious, and you know we had to learn how to play a violin, and I think you know up till the age of 14, you know your brain is very soft and your whole personality I think gets sculptured by then already, so I think, but then. Um, my mother and my stepfather wanted to immigrate to a land of opportunity because you know Austria is very still very classist orientated it's very old-fashioned there's no opportunities you know if you're if you're not born into money you're not gonna get out of that you know you're gonna just have a small apartment with no TV and a shitty fridge and then we moved to Canada and all of a sudden it's a big open space and big houses and opportunities and Everybody was in the same boat there. There's no class there, be classism there yet because the country's not that old, you know. And, and music as well, you know, like it's nobody even there knows who Mozart is. It's like a new frontier, you know. And you're not trying to play on the violin, you know, eine kleine Nachtmusik, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's probably, I got the best of both of them. I got the Alton culture from the old world and the, and the discipline per se, you know. Thank you, nuns to make me a good boy and all. But then, you know, my hair got let down and, and I, I, I actually saw TV for the first time, literally when we moved to Canada, you know, like, and I was like, wow, what's this? What's this culture? What's all this shit? And what, you know, and, and people at the public school here, what time I was 15, and it just changed everything. And so I think I got the best of both worlds and, and, and um, 
I don't think I'd change anything about that, you know. Yeah. You know, the visions I heard when we were first doing skinny puppy shows, you know, an ogre is, you know, cutting himself and you can't see his face, there's blood, and he's hanging from a rope. I kept thinking about us all being marched across the street by nuns in the front and the back in their little suits to like our, you know, like Sunday afternoon uh, church happenings, you know, and I thought if those nuns could see me now, would they even understand or relate as to what we were trying to convey as time? Has time and people and concept changed so much in the last, you know, 30 years? It has, right? You know, like yeah. our level of tolerance, our level of numbness for violence, for pain, for aggression, for things you see in the news, you know, like, I guess everything's really changed though. Like, I keep, but I keep helping. I always go back to that. And I, I like, I like the, the difference, you know? I think faith is really important. I think everybody needs to believe in something, whether it's yourself or your your wife or your children or whatever, what what you're doing. And I think we are all our own gods, you know. What I mean, in that, in that aspect. But no, I, there's nothing. There's nothing. I mean, because I I don't want to preach or I'm, you know, like I think um, it uh, that would just be boring. I think you know. And, and I think, you know, like they, they've proven now that more and more of the world is, are atheists. You know, young people now truly, for the most part, less and less believe in religion, you know. And, but I think it's still good to have like, you know, like really deep-seated roots of like what's right and what's wrong and what, you know, what, and, and belief in something. I think that's really important, you know. You know, if you don't believe in yourself, who will, right? Well, ironically enough, this album cover like was done by Troy Sabatka, and and you know he did our photo shoot for our last album already, and he's a cinema photographer for the in uh, for the film industry, and he just really likes the band, and he wanted an opportunity to try and make a cover, and, and he sort of used his daughter for the sort of the mock-up of the you know the, the face as you see in the image, and we were like, you know, th th this could be really good, and we thought because. We, we changed everything, you know, we took the guitars out, we went back to Roots, and said, Let, let's, you know, like, as much as I like Dave, I said, Let, let's just go with a, a, a new feel, a new thing of everything, and I did uh, add Dave's logo, the, which I think is really cool, and, and I said, let's make that red, so that stands out behind the black and white cover, and uh, I think it's, a, and, and Troy did it for, for free, you know, there was no money, there was no anything, it was just, he, he did a photo shoot, he did the cover, and he was just, that's his hobby, and so like, I think that's why it turned out so great, and and uh, I think it's a classic cover, I mean, uh, I know Dave McKean sent me a, a, a sad face on Twitter when he found out that he wasn't doing the cover, I felt kind of bad, because he's done some really nice work for us, you know, and, uh, but sometimes you just got to change, you know, you just got to go out in the world and do different things, make new sounds, new art, and, and um, hope for the best. You know, we, we always give them a title and then and then just let them go off on that, on that aspect. And, that, and you know, I used to always say, yeah, he's like the fourth member in the band because he created a lot of great images and stuff for us. And um, But, um, yeah, I just, uh, we, to, we just needed, we just wanted something different from top to bottom this time, you know. And because also the band, you know, the two guys, no, there was no Chris Peterson, there was no Reese Fulber, it's just me and Jared and Jeremy, you know, so like it, um, it felt really good fresh and new and fun and, you know the first thing we did was Air Mac before this and that got that did so well and got such a great response you know and that was sort of the precursor to this and, and I think it's taken eight years you know for this to evolve and um, and I think we're all at a, at a great spot and you know like those guys are gonna drive me because you know like I'm obviously a lot older and but they're they're still really driven and so that's good for me I feel kind of lucky that who could have ever planned that it could evolve into like we're now and people are saying this might be the best record we've ever done. I mean that and, and to me like alone is like that. It's pretty cool. Reese is kind of like uh, he's a bit of an anomaly within a strange enigma within himself. We talk all the time but you know he has a family now and he actually did you know we're gonna remix the whole record like um, one, uh, 10 different artists. One person's gonna do each song for next year and we're getting some really unusual artists but Reese did like already a mix for us which is really good and so you know and we'll probably do some delirium stuff and so like you know we're always we're gonna be lifelong friends you know but it's kind of cool that I have this thing where like 
one person walks in, another person does something else. Something always happens. So, which is great, and that's how it's been for 30 years, I think. You can't just have two people be the only ones committed to one thing, because I think sooner or later they would tire of it, you know? So always having an open door policy, and hence the name Frontline Assembly, I always thought, you know, it'd be great to have just people, you know, assembling, like coming with their ideas and then going their way, and it just being a, a never-ending thing, you know? That's ironic, because, you know, Dave from Metropolis, he wants to sign Delirium, and, and like, I know, you know, I'm still on network, and Reese said, yeah, you know, if you want to go back and do like a real Dead Can Dance type of record, you know, the way we did back, you know, very luminous and ominous, he says, I'm totally all in, and Dave, he wouldn't care what we did, he just wants to sign us, whereas Network, you know, they're, that's totally different, you know, they're, they want like music for remixing, for radio, and so that becomes kind of way, kind of a harder aspect because it's not you can't just write hits when yeah. you want. You know they they you know like silence. They just don't come every day. You know so so I'll be curious to see uh, this fall. We're gonna have to decide which label to go on. It'll be interesting to see. You know how, how that transpires. If Network will just say okay. You know or if. Um, Know, but I'd like to do one like that because it's been a long time since we've done like I mean a real dark one you know like a big oh you know just like that, spheres yeah yeah you know but you know like now with real production and like you know like I think that could be really exciting you know.